Hi, and welcome to the French Watch Collector channel. Today on the bench, we have a very special watch, um, which has a lot of history. Actually, it's a very important piece for wrestling and for uh, space uh, because it's related to uh, to the space program. So you can see it's a Breitling 809. I will explain you a bit later in a video the history and the relation with the with the space. Um, but yeah, first you see like this uh, this beautiful watch. Let's check if it works. Put on the crown and uh, move the hand. So that the hand is moving and you can see the dial looks strange. Yeah, there is something different on the dial. And I will explain a bit what's wrong with the, or, or what's different actually with this dial. Not wrong at all. Um, but yeah, the watch is is quite old. It's from uh, from uh, from the 60s, and uh, it need a good maintenance. So what we're gonna do in this video, we're going to disassemble fully this watch, check everything, see how it works, and uh, make it even better when, from what it is right now. And I will explain everything along the along the way, and as well share a bit about uh, story about this beautiful watch. Checking the chronograph now, see if it's working. And you can see there. I just go a bit faster and yeah you see the minute counter ticking the hour counter as well is moving very slowly but it's moving because yeah this is a chronograph like you see the the sub dial at the bottom is uh, an hour uh, it's telling you like it's a 12 hour uh, counter and everything go back to zero okay we're gonna remove the bracelet there the watch is quite clean actually for the age um, the case is uh, is quite in good shape. The dial as well. The dial might have been redone. I think it must have been, uh, yeah, refinished. I'm not sure it's original uh, original finish on the dial. So we're just gonna open the case back and see what we have inside. Obviously a chronograph movement, but which chronograph movement as a surprise? Wow, look at this, beautiful. I love this copper finish like colors on a, on a dial, and we can see the Venus logo. And there's a and there's a balance uh, balance wheel there, the star, and it's actually a Venus 178. You can see the the number there, and look, that's not that's not correct. That's not the proper case screw there. So somebody tried to fix it with uh, a quick fix. So we see if we can find a proper screw like this one. You can see the two screws are very different. That's a that's a proper one. So already something wrong on his watch just after opening it. See something weird? Yeah, that's not the way you want your yeah. And it's, it's simple to 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 find the right screw, so I don't understand why somebody will put this type of uh, of quick fix there. Just going to remove the bezel there, very gently lift it up to release the bezel with the glass. Just turning around, there we go. And you see the the dial there is uh, signed by Lip, which was a, a French company producing watches. Like actually, it was a big company in France like in the 60s and 70s and uh, they had a deal with Breitling and all the Breitling that was uh, imported to France actually was uh, under the name of, uh, of Lip so that's why the, the dial actually is co-signed by Breitling and Lip which is quite cool actually it's probably uh, uh, unique to have this uh, Breitling uh, Cosmonaut Navy Timer but as well with the Lip name on it is uh, pretty nice just removing the hand there so remove the first the hour hand and the center second and now we are removing all the small hand from the sub counters removing the screw there to release this beautiful dial like i gotta say i'm not sure if this dial is 100 percent original but it's looking good yeah just check underneath yeah thing really special there you can see there on this side as well it's quite a lot of parts because obviously like this uh this chronograph has a counter, hour counter, so it's a few extra parts compared to a standard chronograph, which only has minute, uh, a minute counter. Just remove the cannon pinion there with a Presto tool. So I have my website as well. So on my website, we'll have, uh, you can find a couple of things. Some history about the channel and when I started. I'm uh, selling as well some vintage watches that I uh, restored on the channel or that I restored myself uh, not not uh, necessary recordings so if you want to buy some watches from me and as well i propose my services if you want to service your watch you can send me your watch like this one for example that i'm servicing from one subscriber of the channel this beautiful breitling so if you want you can go to my website you will find the description in a link and you can see there the watch is running pretty good actually the amplitude is is good uh, it's losing a few seconds per day that's not bad but the beat error is really bad 9.9 .9, which is like the highest so 
that need to be addressed and uh, we find a solution to, to sort that out a bit later. Okay, so first we're gonna remove the power. I'm just holding the click there underneath with a oiler and I'm just gently going to hold the crown in between my fingers. Just make it slip ever so slightly just to release the power which is in a mainspring. So like that, when there is no power in a watch, we can safely work on it. Be no, no issue, no risk of uh, parts getting damaged with like uh, tension in them. So that's uh, one of the first things that you want to do when you work on a watch. Okay, so we throw there the balance, we just stop rotating. So we can remove this beautiful balancing, balance wheel, sorry. You can see there the Venus 178. There is as well some marking on the, on the watch, like you see the 7U and you see some number as well on the, on the balance cock there it was. So yeah, quite interesting. If you know more about this uh, this model, obviously I will share a bit more later on and uh, about this movement and uh, you will be more than happy to share in a comment. We can, uh, and that's the purpose as well of these uh, videos is to share about the patient, about the watch, about the mechanism, but as well about the model, about the history. So if you want to share uh, some knowledge, you are more than welcome to put it down uh, in the comment section. Okay, so now we're gonna start disassembling the chronograph movement by removing I like to remove all the spring first, all the parts which are around and move my uh, move my way in if you want. And uh, like we did with the with the watch first, we remove the power from the main spring. I like to remove the power as well in a chronograph mechanism by removing all the spring springs that give some tensions. You see like for example this one. And what I do again on a, on a chronograph, I always put back the screws uh, on the, on the on the mechanism just to make sure I don't mix them later on when I will reassemble the watch. That's a safe way to remember where the screws are going because each screws have very small differences like in diameter, the thread, um, like a lot of small changes and you just make, want to make sure the right screw grow at the right place. Okay, so now we're moving along. You see quite a lot of parts actually on his, uh, on his movement. It's a column wheel chronograph. we we'll see a bit later on when we're gonna remove the column wheel. So. Yeah, it's quite a quality movement from uh, from the 60s, yeah. It's not uh, not like the your entry-level chronograph movement, if you want, especially with the hour as well uh, as our indicator, so from the chronograph. Again, a spring there. Removing the clutch now from the chronograph. There we go. It's a mini jumper spring there. Spring there for the chronograph wheel. You know, let's go right in the center. See, I try to remove this little screw, but I don't want to come. Chronograph driving wheel there. As I remove with a Presto tool, which is friction mounted. And yeah, we're getting close to the end of the chronograph mechanism on this side. We're going to move to the other side, to the dial side, where we have the keyless work, obviously, like on uh, most of the watches. But as well, we have like uh, some parts from the chronograph and we have like all the parts for the hour mechanism from the chronograph. So that's what uh, most of the parts are doing on this side. So again, we're gonna disassemble everything with the springs first, just to remove the tensions and remove the rest of the parts. And here there I'm pushing a part, that's the part that goes through and I make the connection between both sides of the chronograph mechanism because obviously when you operate the chronograph, start, stop and reset, you want to have both sides of the mechanisms that are linked to each other and that uh, start, stop and reset at the same time. So that's why you have these parts making the link between uh, the two sides. Okay, you can see there the hammer. We have a kind of a clutch there for the hour wheel. We see a bit later on when we put it back together. You can remove now this bridge on top. That's uh, our wheel for the chronograph. And we have the last few parts again with little screws that I will place back on a, on a mechanism just to make sure I put them back at the right place. And this is a column wheel there from the chronograph. Basically it's a brain, I like to call it the brain of the chronograph because when you when you rotate, that's what you make every, all the parts do this job and be at the right position to start, stop and reset the chronograph. So yeah, that's uh, an important part of the of this mechanism. 
And that's it. We, we disassemble the chronograph fully. So now we are disassembling the rest of the movement, which is pretty standard. If you look at other video, you will find most of these parts on other movements, which is the crown wheel, the ratchet wheel, the click spring there, which I'm removing. Now you see you're gonna remove the screws from the crown wheel. So basically now is parts from the chrono from the from this caliber that just keep the time if you want. We 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 uh it's a it's a base the base caliber and you see a lot of grease there and oil. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, gonna remove this big plate on top, this big bridge. And then the leaf we should have the barrel assembly. And the first few wheels from the train of wheel. Oh, look at the amount of oil there. Yeah, that's strange. Like next to the to the stem, into the winding stem. So I don't know if somebody tried to spray some oil inside. But yeah, that's a lot. Okay. We'll clean all the parts. So you see, that's the purpose as well of disassembling and doing a service on a watch. We are going to uh, like disassemble like I'm doing right now each single part. And we're gonna put them in a in a cleaning machine just to make sure like the parts are as clean as possible and to remove all this uh, old oil, grease, uh, uh, dust, like maybe like some tiny little speck of uh, metal that can be from wear, just to remove everything in a cleaning machine. So like that, when we put back the parts together on a, on a mechanism, everything will be as clean as possible. So now I move to the die side again to the keyless work. And there we go. See a lot of oil as well on this side. Now. Look at the, look at this amount of oil. Pretty sure somebody tried to spray some oil inside this watch from the from the winding stem. It's, it's strange to have to have it only there on this side. Okay, I'll just give a, a quick clean to the jewels, just to remove any uh, dried up oil grease on all the jewels of the watch. And uh, placing back the balance, and we'll have just disassembling a couple of parts, like still need to remove the jewel there from the balance and uh, disassemble the main spring and we should have everything ready uh, to go back in a, in a cleaning machine just to have it as clean as possible and be ready to, to be reassembled. These are so small and you see there are, I like to use these uh, very thin tweezers like there are diamond tweezers just to open the spring and to get these jewels out. Okay. Just going to disassemble the barrel assembly there again to make sure everything is clean inside and we're going to reassemble everything as clean as possible and with new oil and grease for the watch to run for many, many years again. Just removing the barrel there, barrel arbor inside. You can see there is quite a, a long pivot there on the barrel arbor. And just going to take out the, the, the spring. That's where the power of the watch is coming from. And when you wind the watch, basically you are winding the spring. And you can see there actually the spring is a manual spring. So you have a little tongue at the end there and it's broken. So yeah, that's not good. So I will have to find uh, a new mainspring and put a new one inside the watch because yeah, this is not supposed to be uh, supposed to be attached to the, to the mainspring. Cleaning the pivot there with a bit of E-flex again, just to make sure I remove all the dried up oil or grease on a pivot point and all the parts and you see there it's quite a lot of parts on a chronograph gonna go in these little baskets and uh, straight through the cleaning machine to have all these parts like I said as clean as possible and ready to to be reinstalled on the on mechanism okay so the cleaning we do it in a few stages first we do a, a cleaning to wrenching and the last stage will be a, a drying up stage and uh, I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have a, a Patreon page uh, so if you want to support my channel you can go on my Patreon and, and subscribe it will help me a lot uh, to support uh, to support my job and uh, this channel so I would like to thank my existing patron Christian, David, Shelby, Jan, Christian, Corne, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim and Gregory thank you so much guys for supporting me so if you want to join the group and as well support the channel, I will put a, a link down below in the description where you can go have a look and subscribe to one of the plan. And I will be really, really happy to count me uh, to count you as one of my patrons and uh, support my channel. So the parts are dry. And if you did not subscribe to the channel as well, I encourage you to subscribe. Click on the 
uh, thumbs up if you like the chart, if you like the video, that will help to promote the video and on a bell icon as well, because I try to put a video once every two weeks. So you will get a notification every time I put a new video. So thank you in advance as well for, for subscribing. Okay, so now I just oil the jewel there. I'm just closing with the chaton back on top, doing the same on, on the second one. Again, putting the chaton back on top there. And this will be ready to go back on the balance with a brand new clean jewel. So they're not brand new, but they're fully clean and oil right now. They will do their job very nicely on this beautiful balance. And you see the, the blued air spring is wonderful with this uh, gold wheel there. I love the contrast and I love when you have like a blue air spring on a, on a watch. Uh, they look so nice. Okay, doing the same thing on the other side, just closing the spring there. And look at this beautiful and now check, I'm checking just with some hair, see if the balance is behaving, if it needs to be adjusted, if the air spring is flat and it looks good. So no adjustment needed there. Just putting a new spring there, you see, brand new, is shiny with the, putting some lubrication there before I put the barrel arbor back in place. And again, you will see me putting drops of oil at different points. Basically, I'm going to use like uh, on the movement, three general oil, you will have a low viscosity oil, a medium viscosity, and actually a grease, which is a high viscosity grease. And um, this will help obviously the lubrification of the parts so that they run smoothly and uh, we don't have friction between parts, but as well to preserve the, the parts from wear. So that's why we use as well different kind of uh, uh, lubrification types between, uh, between the parts. Okay, so now putting back the parts under this bridge here. So a couple of wheels and the barrel assembly. Just aligning everything. Perfect. Again, see me putting some, some oil there. And we're gonna start reassembling the parts. So the spring there for the click. And we're gonna carry on assembling the rest of the parts. So this this watch, I told you that this watch at the beginning has a very uh, important historical uh, meaning for the space and the watch industry. Actually, this uh, this watch from Breitling is the first Swiss watch to go into space. Um, it was uh, worn by the by uh, uh, Scott uh, Carpenter in the Mercury Atlas Seven mission in uh, 1962. Um, he was, like I said, the first, uh, the first Swiss watch, so from Breitling, and that's why the watch, because obviously they try to um, the collaboration wa was uh, started like few years ago, and um, the per like the Scott like ask uh, Breitling to to do a watch with with a 24 hour indicator on uh, on on the watch and not a 12 hours, so that's why you saw the the dial with uh, 24 hours and uh, markers on them. So it was actually to know, uh, obviously, when it's a 12 hours dial, you don't know when it's a day or night, except if you have a day or night indicator on your watch. But this one doesn't have a day or night indicator, but it prefer to have a 24 hour dial. So you know exactly what time it is, if it's the morning or if it's the afternoon uh, with a 24 hour dial. So that's quite handy. And as well, the, the bezel was a bit thicker to just be able to catch it uh, if you wanted to use the bezel to do some calculation um with gloves uh, so yeah like i said this watch has a very imp important and uh, reason for for like the swiss watch industry and for the space industry and uh, like i said in 1962 unfortunately i think the original watch was uh, destroyed during the flight uh, when he went back down on earth and you know they were laying down in this small capsule and uh, i think some water went inside or i don't know when he went out of the capsule in the sea and some water went into the watch because obviously it's a watch, a chronograph that can take to space, but it's not a, a diving watch. So yeah, and we never saw again the original one. It was maybe destroyed, who knows? Um, but yeah, so that's a very, very, very important watch. Uh, obviously after we know the story, like the NASA, they worked with Omega and with the very famous Speedmaster and now the Speedmaster moon watch that uh, obviously went to the moon. Uh, but yeah, that was, previous like that was in 1969 obviously when it went to the moon but this one went into space in 1962 
So yeah, that's a very, uh, uh, and that's why it's called the Cosmonaut as well, uh, Cosmonaut Navy Timer. It's a pretty, pretty nice watch. I think it's a very nice watch to have in your collection. And with a 24 hour indicator on the dial, it's pretty funky. I think it's not easy to read or you need to get used to because it's very rare that you see a, a watch you're used to with a 12, 12 hours indicator. Um, but yeah, that's a nice twist. And uh, yeah, obviously it's a very interesting piece to have in your in your collection. So yeah, if you if you want to look for one, I think uh, yeah you can go because you see like these calibers this, with this Venus uh, 178, they are like uh, very, very nice calibers. Uh, and they, if they are maintained properly, if they are serviced properly, they will last for generations and generations. So you can go and uh, don't worry about uh, what's inside of the watch. It will be, it will be fine. Okay, so now I'm just starting to reassemble the uh, the watch. We and now we're on a, on a keyless work on a die side. So pretty much done there with the keyless work. Just arming the spring there. Just putting. You see when you're putting this. Uh, this is a blue grease with ice viscosity. Just put quite a lot there. I'm just going to remove the excess with a bit of uh, Rodico. Keyless work is done. I'm oiling all the jewels there, the pivot points. And uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to assemble. Uh, because you see there, this part that I put actually the other side um, of the of the barrel assembly, and that's what's linked for the that's the link with this wheel on top for the hour wheel of the chronograph. But before I put uh, the balance on the other side and start the movement, uh, I like to have this assembled because you see the the pivot point for the for the balance uh, for the sorry um, for the barrel assembly. Is hanging there in, a, and I need to put this bridge just to make sure, like the other side of the ball is uh, is on its pivot point. That's the part I go through. You remember from both sides, and you see this side is going to connect to the colon wheel, and the other side is going to connect with this like little arm that I'm putting right now. So like that, we have both sides connected to send the information to the hour wheels of the chronograph. Talking about it, that's our wheel from the chronograph that I'm installing right now. With the arch cam there on top that I'm lubricating now. With a bit of oil. Again, you see putting some blue grease where, where you have the part we see a lot of friction when we put a spring later on and put the tension in a in a mechanism. And that's a the bridge that I was talking about, where you have uh, obviously it's used as a pivot point for the barrel assembly on the on this side, putting the screw. And we have this clutch here, actually. This is like a spring that will engage and disengage um, the wheel, like the gold wheel that we put on top of the barrel assembly. So it will lift it up to disengage it, to put it down. Uh, when we when we start the uh, chronograph, so that's uh, it's like a clutch, a, a vertical clutch, if you want, almost. So it's a pretty funky solution to do it. We have the rest of the part there with the hammer just to reset the hour wheel to zero. Again, oiling all the different points, and at the last, like we did the opposite when uh, that what we what we did when we disassembled the watch, I put the spring later as possible to put the tension in a, in a mechanism. There you go. We have the screw there. And again, we have two screws inside, keeping at the same time this uh, bridge here and, and the spring. Put the first one and the second one. And now after we should be able to arm the spring in position. There we go. So the die side is done. Just move back to the to the balance. We're gonna oil all the jewels. I did the one as well of the escape, but not on camera. And uh, now we're gonna put the balance. First the pallet fork, and after the balance, balance wheel there. Okay, pallet fork is in place. And uh, we're gonna see if we manage to to make it run again. This uh, beautiful uh, Venus 178 movement. Just putting a bit of a wine, putting some strength in the movement. I'm oiling there with oiler the jewels from the pallet fork. I do that a few times there. 
And now I can put this beautiful again, balance, wonderful color of the hairspring. Just put it in place. Doesn't want to start there, not yet. I'm just going to press it very gently in position, see if you want to start. And I can see what's wrong there, but obviously when I put it on, it's on the other side, so I did not see it. You will see what's, uh, why it did not start. No, doesn't want to go. Just checking there, what's something wrong. And yeah, look, the air spring is on top there of the wheel. It should go underneath. There we go. It's in position. And you saw it started immediately after putting it back under the, under the wheel. Perfect. So the watch is running. So now we, let's focus on the case first. We're going to remove this old and uh, hard. You see, it's, it's quite hard. Uh, gasket there, we're going to remove. Going to put all the parts as well in an ultrasonic machine just to make sure again if it's, it looks very clean, but just to make sure like uh, it's fully, fully clean. Remove the crystal, just give it a bit of uh, give it a bit of uh, polish later on, and we can carry on with the assembly there. So, first, gonna put the colon wheel, like I said, the brain of the chronograph. You can see that the balance, balance wheel, which is running very, very nicely. Checking the wheel there, if it's turning freely, yeah, looks good. So that one makes the link between the chronograph wheel and the minute wheel from the chronograph. And now we're gonna reinstall all the parts for the chronograph mechanism. So that's what I like to do as well uh, on the chronograph or the parts. I like to assemble the base movement just to make sure it runs and uh, it runs good as well. Uh, just put it on a time grapher uh, in between just to check like uh, the amplitude is right and there is nothing wrong on a, on a time grapher, on a, on a reading. And after, if I know it's right, uh, it's maybe not fully adjusted yet, but I know it's working fine. After I start assembling the complications, and uh, in this case, uh, the complication on his watch is the chronograph. So that's what all the parts we are reassembling now. With this spring there on a chronograph wheel, the brake, gonna put in right now. So you see, obviously, a chronograph is a uh, lot more complicated than a standard three-handed three -handed watch. And that's why, as well, when you do a service, uh, generally, a chronograph is a lot more expensive than a, than a very simple watch because, yeah, there is a lot more parts. It's a lot more complex. Uh, you need to set it up as well at the end. There is, like, a s setting to do on a chronograph uh, a lot more than on a standard watch where, basically, what you have to adjust it's only the balance wheel. Here, there, you, you have to adjust few parts in between each other to make sure the chronograph is functioning perfectly fine. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's more complex. It takes more time uh, to, to service a chronograph, obviously. So that's why the cost is uh, more on a chronograph rather than uh, just a, a simple manual watch, let's say. Okay, putting a spring there, you see me with my plastic stick there just to keep it in place to make, to make sure it doesn't jump. We have the hammer there that's used to reset the chronograph and the minute wheel. And again, like we did on the other side, I like to put all the, all the parts and uh, we put the springs at the end or uh, uh, like uh, latest as possible just to when all the parts are in because you don't want to work on parts which are under tension so that's why you want to 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 put them uh, the latest as possible if you want so it's the it's a, a safest way to to reassemble the reassemble the watch again and you see me lubricating there all the pivot point and look at the shape of this spring so probably manufacture uh, like yeah, obviously like even in the sixties, the, the the production like the machine that they used to produce these parts were a lot less, let loss, uh, a lot less modern compared to today. Obviously, like uh, not automatic, it was probably manual machine. A lot of stuff probably was done by hand as well. Um, yeah, and it's pretty nice and pretty amazing to see like especially on the chronograph, you have a lot of parts which are made in one piece and with like difficult shapes like uh, uh, like a lot of angles and a uh, lot of rounds edges and stuff like that so yeah a lot more and that's why as well a chronograph 
it's more expensive again it's uh, more difficult to service but it's more difficult to make as well to produce so yeah just checking the mechanism there even if i did not put the last spring but you can see there when i'm click there every, the column wheel is turning and we can see the parts doing their jobs there so that's good and putting the last spring that go on a clutch and uh, with this spring we switch the clutch engage and disengage yeah now it's disengaged and we when we engage it right now we see the center wheel turning from the chronograph perfect and let's check if the minute wheel is turning and it should come about now tack yeah the minute just jumped there from the chronograph perfect that's good so we can put the hour wheel which is a bit different there because you see it's a 24 hour hour wheel and not a 12 hours hour wheel compared on a, on a normal watch so there I put back the dial I did not do anything on a dial um, it looks quite good so did not uh, did not bother doing anything special on the dial place it back in the case put back the winding stem if you want to go back beautiful breaking crown on it okay just securing there the winding stem putting back the ring where we'll have the bezel turning around and we put it back a bit later on just inserting there this kind of uh, c-clip parts just to make sure the ring stay in place just put a new case screw so that's the old one and gonna see if we can put a, a new one that's a new one there we go that's much better that was than the the one I, I found in the watch which is a, a lot more normal so now we can install the hands so we put the hour end first put the minute end all of them aligned to midnight just to make sure they when one is on an hour uh, the minute end is on 12 obviously just check if it's working fine so at five o'clock there uh six o'clock sorry yeah it's not three o'clock that's that's a dial that's uh yeah it's uh, very different you need to get used to it i guess when you wear this watch putting the second hand from the hour putting now the second hand from the chronograph Just pressing in place there with my Rotec tool. Just checking, start and stop and a reset. Yes, it go back to zero. That's perfect. Now I'm putting the minute hand. Putting it aligning to zero as well and press it in place. And we're gonna check as well when we put it in place. And that's what I like to do on a chrono every time. Start the chrono. See first if the minute hand will jump when the second end go back to 12 yes it looks like yeah perfect the jump is there and obviously after with the minute hand and the hour hand we like to check as well if uh, when we reset the chronograph if it go back to zero we see that a bit later at the end on a final test okay i'm putting the bezel there which i just polished so i will use my uh, version press tool there just gonna put the uh, and just putting a bit of tension just to bend ever so slightly the crystal so I can insert the bezel inside there because the crystal is just just even s smaller in diameter when it's bent so I can insert the crystal and now release everything and we can reinstall that on the watch putting back this ring around here we go and we can fit the bezel with the polished crystal. Looks very, very nice. It's rotating nicely. Perfect. And you see the result on a time grapher. So you see the bit error went to 0 0.3 and it was 9.9. That was really bad. Actually, the amplitude is a bit lower, but the watch need to, to run a bit. Like uh, obviously when you, when you just finish a watch, you need the oil to settle. So the amplitude is around 260, but it will go higher and uh, the watch is turning right around zero second per day so that's perfect and let's check the chronograph this is working very well so we'll start it you see the minute wheel 
counting. The hour hand is moving very slowly, but it's moving. Uh, so that's why when you have a 12 hours counter, obviously move very slowly and the reset. Yeah, everything go back to zero. So this is perfect. And this is a finished product, a beautiful historical timepiece. So I hope you like the restoration and I see you in my next video. Bye bye.